The action takes place in the Zhangmeng Beast Sect. The moment has come when the first disciple of the Beast Sect needs to create his golden core. However, the teacher warns Zhenya that he may accidentally create a heavenly core of the beast, since the student is very talented and the master himself will envy him. Having created the core of the beast, the hero will not only be able to communicate with the imperial beasts, but also merge with them, gaining new strength. The master of the beast Sektian Wanning says that he failed to create a heavenly core of the beast and he puts all his hopes on his disciple. A heavy burden has fallen on Zhenya's shoulders to create the core of the beast and glorify the sect, so the main character promises to do everything possible not to disappoint the teacher. The disciple takes Gu Yuan's spiritual core along with the manuscript Yuang Juxin and goes to his room. At this time, one of the two brothers watching the ceremony mockingly notices the envy in the eyes of the second, to which he replies that he would not envy an orphan. The master, hearing these words, got angry and scolded the young men for being jealous of their comrade instead of devoting their time to improving cultivation. Suddenly, the teacher abruptly turns cold and calls the young men to follow him to complete the task. Further, it is narrated that Lin Tian is the world in which the sects of immortality are located. The four strongest of them are the Mai Yao sect, the Tian Ling Zai sect, the Bai Hua Men sect and, finally, the Beast sect. In the distant past, the immortal master of all beasts opened a portal that animals and people could use. He came to the Beast sect and conquered all the others, making the Beast sect one of the strongest. A few generations later, the secret of the heavenly core beast technique was revealed and the status of the beast sect grew. And now, centuries later, the main character is sitting in his room in the dead of night and trying to create a heavenly core of the beast, because the usual will not satisfy him. Sio Zhen is very diligently reading the words from the manuscript, when suddenly a huge ray of energy hits the ground and a large glowing tiger spirit appears in the sky. The master, seeing this, gets so excited that he breaks the mug in his hands. The teacher is very glad that his student did not let him down, while the main character thinks with delight that he will finally be able to please the master. Approaching the master's room, the main character notices that some strange noise is coming from there. Zio is surprised that the teacher didn't sleep so late and waited for him all night. Approaching the door, the main character tries to open it, when suddenly someone knocks it out from the inside and the door shatters into splinters. The main character realizes that his master was attacked by people who own spiritual snakes that devour souls. These green creatures crawl into the hero, but he dodges the blow. Zio Zhen loudly asks the criminals about who they are and how they know the techniques of the beast sect, but the people with masks covering their faces are silent. Zio then decides that this fight will be a great way to test the power of the heavenly core and strikes with the shattering jade tiger Shan Jing. This blow throws the opponent into the wall, thereby destroying it so that the criminal flies out into the street. At this moment, a second criminal attacks Zio from behind, but Jen is calm because the jade tiger does all the work for him, crushing the attacker with one blow. Pleased with himself, the protagonist finally seeks to find out who is hiding behind the mask, while the criminal is absolutely motionless. However, at this moment, a third villain appears, who, judging by the attire and mask, is the main one among the gang and stronger. The criminal leaves the building by jumping on the roofs of houses, while Zio chases after him. So they end up on the Huey Shoe Rock. The main character loudly and angrily demands the opponent to show his face. The criminal, ignoring the statement of the main character, tells that the last time the heavenly core of the beast was created only by the founder of the sect 573 years ago. The villain notes that Sayo has a huge potential and, given his talent, the hero will be able to achieve a lot in a hundred years, but the sect cannot wait so long. Zio fearfully asks the opponent who he is, but he does not answer, but only strikes the strongest blow. However, Zhen was able to withstand this blow, despite the fact that the attack was at the level of the divine world, and the disciple himself reached only gold, because he will receive the power of the heavenly core. Suddenly Zio realizes with horror that his teacher is hiding behind the mask of the villain. At this moment, blood starts gushing from the mouth of the main character, and he becomes ill. Zio does not understand what is happening. However, the teacher tells him that in the core that he gave him at the ceremony there was Kai Zhen energy, which turns into poison upon contact with the Kai of the snake. The master sets a condition for Zio that if he gives the core voluntarily, he will die quickly and painlessly, to which Zhen responds with surprise mixed with anger that he will not give up the core. The master extracts the core from the young man's body, bringing him hellish pain. The teacher himself regrets it, but he has no other choice. The power that came out of the core is so strong even outside of Zio's body that it destroys the mask and dark robe behind which the master was hiding. 
the defeated and defeated protagonist asks only one question, why? To which the teacher meekly replies that he does everything for the sake of the sect. At this time, other disciples of the sect come running to the rock and the master, along with two young men who helped him, pretend that Zio attacked him and stole a relic of the sect. In young men, you can recognize two brothers from the ceremony. They believe that there will be no forgiveness for such an act by Zio. The master asks Zio if he admits the mistake he made. Jen says with grief and anger that the only mistake was that he trusted the teacher. According to the rules of the sect, the traitor must starve to death. So the master throws Zio Jen off the cliff into the abyss with one strong blow. Flying down like a stone, Zio thinks only that his hatred for Yin wanting will never disappear and he will definitely take revenge on the master. After some time, the hero finds himself lying alone on another rock, where a poisonous snake is approaching him. She injects poison into his arm. This is noticed by a huge eagle flying by. He grabs the main character with his claws, and picks up a snake with his beak. While the eagle was flying over the gorge, the snake let out a cry to which several snakes appeared, much larger in size than the eagle. The bird dropped the young man from its claws in amazement and Sayo fell into the abyss. Finally reaching the ground, the weak body of the protagonist landed next to a huge, amazingly beautiful dragon. The dragon is surprised that a man got into his gorge, because he has not come across people for several thousand years. The animal is very sorry that the young man suffered such a fate, because there is potential in him, despite his weak body. Having fallen into this place, the hero was supposed to rot in the dark, but the powers of the heavenly core of the beast still remained in him. Noticing this, the dragon used his powers to wake up the hero, hoping that Zio would help the dragon get out of the gorge. At this time, Genya has a dream about how dozens of snakes surrounded him, wanting to attack him. But Zio is not afraid, because he still has the remnants of the power of the heavenly core of the beast and he is confident that he will be able to fight back. But suddenly a teacher appears in front of the young man, who betrayed him. In fear, Zio begins to scream, which wakes him up. Looking at his left hand, the guy realized that he did not feel it at all, because the poison had hit the limb almost completely. However, Zio does not despair, because at least he is alive. This thought gives him strength and even makes him laugh. Suddenly, some voice, noticing that everything is healing very quickly on the guy, interrupts Zio's inner monologue. Frightened by the surprise, Jen orders the speaker to show himself, to which he warns Zio not to be afraid. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appears in front of the hero and blue horns hovering in the air. Zio notices that she smells like a beast, to which the girl replies that Jen probably knows who she is. The frightened Zio thinks only about what kind of animal it is and whether she will eat it. The girl, as if reading Genya's thoughts, answers him that she does not eat such weak ones and is not going to eat him. Suddenly, the girl crawls up to the young man with questions about what kind of nightmare he had and assumes that his teacher betrayed him. The girl notices that the young man looks at her strangely, and therefore takes the form of a dragon. At this moment, the puzzle in the young man's head develops and he realizes that the dragon to whom he fell in the gorge is this girl. The girl introduces herself by the name Ju. Despite the fact that the guy has a lot of questions, Ju is the first to ask about how Zio got to this place, to which the young man replies that he was betrayed and defamed. Hearing this, Ju offers Zio a contract, she will restore his cultivation and help him take revenge. Jen agrees without hesitation, which surprises Ju, so the girl wonders if the guy is afraid that she will deceive him. To which Zio he replies that he is not even good for her to eat, so the young man sees no point in cheating. After that, Ju, noticing that she likes the way Zhen thinks, begins to draw hieroglyphs in the air to conclude a contract and asks Zio to lend a hand. A girl and a young man conclude a blood contract, during which the spirit of the beast flows into the body of the young man. By doing this, the girl warns Zio that she is one of the most powerful beasts and does not thirst for blood, and her form in battle will change depending on the wishes of the guy. The girl also notices that the young man was very badly wounded, because his inner core is destroyed, and the meridians are torn, and he is alive only thanks to his willpower. Ju concludes that the person who betrayed Zio tried very hard and recalls that she was also betrayed once. From that moment on, Zio's body will become one, and the lives will be connected into one. Ju promises to protect the guy and hopes that he will not let her down. After the end of the ritual, the young man notices that the pain he experienced at the conclusion of the contract is not comparable to the pain of the betrayal of the sect. Zio also discovered that he was beginning to form his own core. A month later, a guy in the lotus position is sitting on the edge of a cliff and judging by the nests of birds on his shoulders, he has been sitting in this position all the time. 
Suddenly, the guy jumps up and joyfully notices that his core has finally formed, and his meridians and arm have fully recovered. Suddenly, stones from the mountain are flying at the young man from above. Zio quickly makes the decision to descend from the cliff into the forest. The snake that bit Genya's hand is waiting for him there, but now the guy is strong enough to grab it with one blow. Suddenly, snakes come to the snake's cry, much more, but it is not difficult for Zio to finish off these snakes with one blow. After a successful fight, Jen happily announces to Ju that they can head to the beast sect. However, the girl does not agree with him and says there is no need to hurry. Suddenly, a scream comes from the depths of the forest. Zio asks Yu about what kind of noise it is, to which the girl replies that it is the defender of the Wanshu Valley, through whom they must pass to get to the beast sect. Zio is not very eager to fight the beast and asks Yu if there is no other way, to which the girl replies that this is the only way. On one of the rocks in the dense forest of the Wanshu Valley, Zio Zhen was sitting in his usual lotus position. Zhu hovered in the air next to him and conjured something over the birds flying by. Judging by the rays of blue energy emanating from the main character, he was now working hard on studying energy. In just three months, he managed to learn how to control the power that Zhu gave him. However, if he wanted to master the true power of his core, he had to figure out how to fight better. Zhu told the young man with a grin that she was fighting well. In response to this, Zio rose to his feet and, using the power of his core, as if plastered his arm with a very thick and durable black armor. Zhu, who saw it for the first time, was very surprised. To impress the girl even more, Jen hit a nearby tree with all his might so that it flew out of the ground with its roots. And although Zio was pleased with himself, the girl was not particularly impressed. She said that it was a stupid technique and since now they share the same body, they can combine their forces and the technique will become a hundred times better. The stronger the bond between Zhu and Zio, the stronger they will be, so they need to achieve divine fusion. With such a merger, Zio will be absolutely omnipotent, and will be able not only to move mountains, but also to extinguish the stars if he wishes. To help Zio achieve this result, Zhu directs himself and all his strength into the guy's head. His eyes glow blue and his body is completely under the control of the girl. In this state, Zhu, having collected all, the energy is put together, the deer strikes the strongest fatal blow. A whirlwind of blue energy knocks down everything in its path, and not only uproots trees, but also lifts into the air the earth that was once under them. After demonstrating his crushing blow, Zhu leaves Zio's body and the guy regains consciousness. Shocked, Jen asks the girl why, if she has such strength, she could not get out of the bottom of that gorge on her own and lay alone among the bones. The girl told him that the power she possesses is quite unusual, and without a guide she is not able to use it. Zhu also notes that over the past three months, Zio has recovered well and now his strength has finally reached the level of the Golden World, which means that they can return to the big gorilla, the defender of Wanshu Valley. Suddenly, the heroes heard a loud roar and turned their heads towards the sound. Then they saw a huge gorilla standing on a high rock and watching the heroes. Apparently, the beast decided to come to Zio and Zhu himself. The heroes decide to hide and attack the animal in a weak spot, since this defender of the valley is a legendary mystical beast and can defeat Genya. Zio has no idea where it is better to attack the animal, but Zhu tells him that it is best to hit the stomach, since there is no fur, and the core of the beast is located there. At this moment, a huge gorilla Zhu Yan approaches the heroes, from which a stone falls from a cliff and almost blows Zio. Fortunately, thanks to Zhu, Zio manages to deviate from the flying piece of rock. Finding a good place to rest, Zhu tells Zio that if the young man defeats the beast and gets its core, then Zhen and Zhu will be able to absorb energy, which will make them stronger. There might even be new abilities that Zio hadn't heard of before. Zhu Yan, addressing Zhu, asks about where she will go when she leaves the valley and whether she will continue to search for that person. He also warns her that as long as the beast is the keeper of the valley, Zhu will not be able to leave there. Hearing this, Zio is surprised to notice that Zhu was talking about some person that Zio had not heard of before. The gorilla warns Genya that the affairs of the animals do not concern him and it is better for him, a mortal man, to leave and not interfere with the showdown between them. But Zio ignores Zhu's words and calls him to battle. Using the power of the core, Zhen creates armor on both of his arms, and the same horns that Zhu has are visible on his head. With a battle cry, the young man is the first to attack Zhu, but it is not difficult for the beast to throw the guy aside, reflecting his blow. Expecting that the enemy is defeated, the beast is surprised when he sees that Zio is safe, alive and unharmed. With a grin, Zhu notices that he underestimated the guy, but this state of affairs further provokes the gorilla. Escaping Zhu's gaze, Zio makes several quick jumps around him, 
climbing higher and higher. All this he does in order to disperse the attention of the beast and hit him in a weak spot. The beast is infuriated by such tactics and he hits the ground with all his might with a crushing roar, hoping to hit the young man. At this moment, Zhu notices that Sayo will not be able to defeat Zhu by brute force alone. The beast screams in rage that the heroes are too weak and wonders how they dare to compete with him. At this moment, Zayo realizes that now is the best time to attack the gorilla in a weak spot, and hits him in the stomach with all his might. A hard blow to the stomach caused blood to flow from Zhu Yan's mouth. Despite this, the beast was strong enough to repel Zayo's second attack, slamming him into the rock with his fist. The blow was so strong that if not for Zhenya's diligent training, which lasted for three months, it could have been the last for the young man. However, now the guy had enough strength to withstand this blow. Meanwhile, Zhu Yan, enraged and embittered by the fact that some insignificant mortal man was able to inflict such a strong blow on the guardian and dared to injure him, began aggressively attacking Zio with renewed vigor. This time, the beast, like a dragon, spewed a strong stream of flame from its mouth directly at the boy. Realizing that Zio had nowhere to dodge the fire, he decided to create a shield around himself and try to resist Zhu Yan's power. After the collision of the two forces, a strong explosion occurred, throwing Zio several meters off the cliff towards the forest. And although the guy was injured, he managed to stay alive and he was able to notice that Zhu was able to create such powerful attacks, despite the fact that he had already been hit in a weak spot. Chen spent all his strength on creating a shield from the flame and now he absolutely did not understand what to do. At this time, Zhu was already preparing to strike the next blow, not inferior in strength to the previous one. Suddenly, Zhu appeared next to Zio and warned the guy that he could not cope without her strength and Zhenya should give the girl control over the body. However, Zio refused such an offer, saying that he had a plan and the girl should trust him, because being on the verge of life and death, the guy was able to feel something. In the next second, the right arm, part of the torso and half of the young man's face darkened and became covered with the same black and blue armor. In place of protection, a blue horn of Zhu and her sharp ear appeared on the guy's face, and the eye began to glow blue. The guy realized what his fusion with Zhu was capable of, and now he realized that he could half give control of the girl's body and combine their powers. Now, having become stronger, Sayo delivered a strong blow to Zhu Yan's stomach, causing him to release his energy from his body and fall to the ground. Then Zhen struck the beast another blow in the belly, from which blood poured out of the beast's mouth again. And when the opponent weakened enough, Zio delivered the final blow, using the very vortex that Zhu showed him, finished off the opponent. Realizing that Zio and Zhu had coped and finally defeated the beast, he rejoiced at this out loud, to which Zhu objected, saying that Zio had done all the work himself. After a while, Zhu was able to extract the core of the beast from Zhu Yan's lifeless body, and asked Zio to open his mouth, because only in this way could he absorb the power of the core. After swallowing the core, the guy felt a powerful surge of energy and a bright blue-purple lightning colored the sky from his strength. She hit the young man giving him all her strength and now the guy was able to reach the top of the golden world level. Thanks to this, Zio became able to use a third of Zhu's power, although previously he could only use a small part of it. The guy noticed that the energy he owns now is completely different and significantly different from the energy of animals. Zio also mastered the technique of merging with Zhu and became strong enough to return to the beast sect and take revenge on his master. After these thoughts, Jen began to climb up the mountain, to the very rock from which the teacher threw him. At this time, one of the two brothers who participated in the conspiracy against Zio was standing on the Hui Shu rock. He noticed a purple lightning in the sky and was very surprised. The guy assumed that this outburst was the result of one of the beasts reaching a level above the golden core. At that moment, the guy heard a rumble coming from below the cliff. Looking in that direction, the guy couldn't believe his eyes. A strong man was climbing up to him, with courage in his eyes and clearly evil intentions. But most of all, the guy was surprised when he recognized Zio and this man. Zhen jumped on a rock and greeted the guy joyfully, noticing that it had been a long time since their last meeting. It was obvious from the guy's face that he was glad of such a coincidence and was looking forward to the upcoming fight and the victory he would win in it. Still not believing in what is happening, the guy standing on the rock loudly asks Zio about whether it is really him. The guy does not understand how this can happen, because Jen should have died a long time ago. The realization of the fact that Zio is alive scares the guy and pisses him off. In response to his opponent's shouts and perplexities, Zio just smiles and asks the guy if he is surprised. The green-haired guy still doesn't understand how this could have happened, because Jen's cultivation was destroyed, and he himself was thrown into the backyard of Wan Shu, 
But despite this, Zio not only survived, but also became much stronger. But in response to Genya's grin, the guy only shouts that Zio is a traitor and does not understand how he had the audacity to return back to the sect. Such statements greatly angered Zio, because in fact, the heavenly core of the beast was taken away from him. His cultivation was destroyed and they even wanted to kill the young man. But for some reason the traitor is called Zio, not the master. Jen firmly decided that today he would make the beast sect pay for all the pain caused to him. In response to Zio's reasoning, the opponent reminds that Jen was actually an orphan and should thank the master for picking him up, because without this the hero would not have survived. In addition, the sect accepted Zio and taught him new techniques, and he, according to one of the brothers, stole a relic of the sect and attacked the master. As always hovering in the air next to Zio, Zhu noticed how cleverly the opponent twisted the whole story against Jen and that such an approach was in the style of the beast sect. However, the owner of the girl was very determined. From the words that flew out of the green-haired guy's mouth, Zio again experienced all the pain and resentment of betrayal. The statement hurt the guy so much that he got angry at the joke and ordered Nangong Tsushui to shut up. In order for the opponent to fulfill Zio's will, the young man decided to strike him. However, Nangong twisted in such a way that Zio flew past him and almost fell off the cliff again. But this time Jen did not repeat the mistakes of the past, because he was ready for such a development. The young man deftly turned around and ran towards the enemy again. Nangong, who did not expect such a maneuver from Zio, out of fright made an attack with spiritual snakes devouring souls. A small explosion occurred from the collision of the two forces, which led to the fact that the guys were thrown in different directions from each other. At that moment, Nangong realized that he had reached the peak of the Golden Core world and was strong. The guy did not understand how it was possible to do this in just two months, given the state in which Zio was. In order for Nangong to reach this level, he needed secret techniques that his master taught him, while Zio was able to do it on his own. Despite this, the cultivation of Zio's opponent was stronger, because Jen had lost the heavenly core of the beast and realizing this, Nangong concluded that he could still defeat Jen. The guy attacked Zio with a jerk of the spiritual snake and ordered the animal to finish Zio off, but Jen had no trouble wrapping his arm with armor, grabbing the snake by the throat and destroying the energy. At that moment, taking advantage of Zio's distraction, Nangong attacked the guy from behind with three snakes already. Fortunately, Ju warned the owner about the coming danger in time and Zio was able to dodge the snakes. Nangong noted that last time, after throwing Zio off the cliff, the master took pity on him and left him alive. But today there will be no mercy for him. Zio replied that his opponents survived then. But today luck is definitely not on his side and Jen will be able to defeat them. Ju, watching everything that was happening, decided to warn her master against impulsive actions and asked him not to let rage control him. The girl reminded him that Zio had already mastered the fusion technique and Nangong was not dangerous for him. To which Zio replied that he was able to deal with the enemy himself without the help of Ju. Hearing that Jen was answering someone, Nangong was surprised, because he did not see anyone near Zio, and did not understand who he could talk to. Finally, the opponent decided to deal a crushing blow to Jenya and rushed towards the young man with a battle cry. But Zio had no difficulty just grabbing the opponent by the arm, thereby stopping his attack. Squeezing his hand harder, Zio began to inflict severe pain on his opponent, from which Nangong was unable to remain silent. At that moment, Zio told the guy that if he helped reveal Yin Wanting's true motives, then Jen would act mercifully. Suddenly, Nangong began to melt and spread like wax from a candle flame. The guy will turn into a liquid clot and, using the snake escape technique, freed himself from Jenya's grip. While doing this, Nangong questioned Zio's determination and his confidence that he was dangerous to the beast sect. Suddenly, Nangong appeared in front of Zio in a new guise, and next to him was a huge dark green snake. The opponent called Jenya incompetence and said that he could not compete with the master himself. He also said that after Zio disappeared, a powerful predecessor of the beast sect came and the master was able to complete his plan, in which Jen was just a small stone in the way of Yin wanting. Suddenly, the strongest energy engulfed the place. Zio immediately realized that it was the master's power and realized that Zhu Yan's energy was practically negligible compared to it. Thus, the master conveyed some kind of message to Doi and Nangong, after which the guy said that their fight, unfortunately, would have to be postponed and began to leave the rock. Zio tried to stop the opponent, but his strength was not enough for this. Nangong disappeared, and Zhu noticed that if Zhen had used her strength, the enemy would not have been able to escape. 
Zio replied that it was too early for the sect to know about the existence of Ju and he kept her as an ace up his sleeve. Zio went to the sect in the hope that he would meet the master and we could take revenge on him. The girl at this moment mentally noticed that the young man has not yet learned to fully control his rage and he needs practice. When Zio came to the beast sect, he saw the ruins and did not meet a single living soul. The only question the main character was asking now was, what happened here? Zio stood among the stone ruins left over from the beast sect. He looked around in bewilderment, not understanding what could have happened here and who arranged it. Zhu obviously noticed that the sect was defeated, to which Zhen replied that it was impossible and he did not believe his eyes. The guy kicked down the door of the house in front of him and went inside. The room was a complete mess and disorder, a huge layer of dust, broken windows and fallen ceiling beams on the floor. After examining the room, Zhu concluded that no one has lived here for a long time. Zio picked up someone's robe from the floor, looked angrily at the thing belonging to someone from the sect of beasts, and threw it on the ground. In a rage, Zio rushed to the exit of the house. Zhu asked the owner in surprise about where he was going, to which Zhen replied that he intended to find the sect of the beast and destroy Yin Wanting. The girl asked Zio what he would do if his plan didn't work and he couldn't defeat his master. This question infuriated Zio and he shouted angrily that even if he did not find Wanting, he would beat the information out of Zion Meng but defeat would never suit him. Yin is nowhere to hide from Zio and the guy intends to get him out of the ground if necessary. Zhu flies up to the young man and turns out to be just a couple of centimeters from his face. The girl wraps her hands around Zio's face and he, instantly calmed down, looks at the girl in shock. The girl asks the guy to calm down and think about the words that Nangong said to him. The man told that the sect of the beast became much stronger after Zio's departure. Zhu said she chose Zio because he was able to create the heavenly core of the beast. Even the girl, being a powerful beast, does not know how the master was able to pull off such a thing, but it helped the teacher to go beyond the unimaginable world. Under this condition, Zio is unlikely to be able to cope with Yin Wanting. The girl also noted that after Nangong summoned his mystical beast, he became much stronger and even if Zio had used the fusion, he could have lost. But Jen is determined and is not ready to give up, so he accepts help from Zhu. A little upset, Zio and Zhu are moving in a green forest among dense trees. The girl plans to train Jenya so that he becomes stronger and can defeat Wanton. To make the way to Wan Ting Valley go faster, Zhu took over Zio's body. Thus, the girl used her strength to move very fast. The Zhu and Zio's body moved so fast that only clouds of smoke remained behind her. Jenya was not satisfied with this state of affairs and he asked Zhu to return control of his body to him but the girl did not listen to him. In addition, while in Zio's body, Zhu put on the same beast sect robe found in the destroyed house, as she was too shy to move around with her bare torso. After reaching the right place, Zhu left Zio's body and handed over control to him again. Jen was a little offended and angry at Zhu for the fact that she unceremoniously seized control of the young man's body, but the girl was in no hurry to apologize to Zio, because she knew that he was not really angry. To get Jenya to talk, the girl dropped that she noticed a problem in the strength of the young man. Zio immediately became interested in what kind of problem she was talking about and the guy, unable to stand it, asked Zhu to tell in more detail. This time the girl pretended to be offended by the guy. Zio rolled his eyes wearily, but a second later he was happy again after Zhu started talking. The girl said that she feels like his soul is connected to another beast besides her, and she suspects that this smell comes from a heavenly beast. And although the smell is not very pronounced, Zhu still feels it and assumes that this beast has not yet merged with the core. This gives Zio and Ru an opportunity to buy time for training so that the young man can become stronger. There are many demonic beasts to fight in Wanshu Valley, so this is a great place to strengthen cultivation. According to Zhu's plan, after Zio becomes stronger, he will be able to take revenge on Yin Wanting and defeat him. Suddenly, the girl interrupts her reasoning, because she hears some extraneous sound coming from the forest. She concludes that someone is hiding there and suggests that it could be someone from the beast sect. Zhu and Jen are heading towards the sound. Zio runs with all his might, but is wary, because there may be an enemy there. Suddenly, a beautiful young girl runs out of the forest, with pink hair, dressed in a white kimono with a black cape. The girl is crying out that she has had enough and she can't take it anymore, while a big black leopard with red ears pointed at the end, red eyes and a white glowing crescent moon in her forehead is chasing her. The animal prepares to strike the girl and opens its mouth with sharp snow-white fangs. The girl screams that she doesn't want to die, but it seems the beast is already close. Suddenly the girl stumbles and falls to the ground, and the leopard is ready to jump on her and bite. But fortunately at this moment Zio appears, 
who with one blow of his fist demolishes the beast and prevents trouble. The girl, stunned by what is happening, compares what happened to a fairy tale in which the prince saves the beauty from an evil monster. Besotted with feelings for the young man, she loses the creature and falls to the ground. Zio notices this and is very surprised, and Zhu jokingly calls Jenya a prince on a white horse. However, the fun doesn't last long, because the leopard is still able to attack. Zhu tells Zio that the beast that attacked the girl is a demonic moon leopard. This animal is not able to communicate with people in any way, but despite this, it is on top of the golden world. Summarizing all of the above, Yu asks Zio to be careful, but there is not a shadow of fear on the young man's face. Zio, on the contrary, is very glad that he found such a strong and powerful opponent so quickly. Jen wraps his arms in black armor again and prepares to attack. The animal does not have time to attack the guy, as he strikes the leopard with a crushing blow with his fist, jumping on the beast from top to bottom. But once on the ground, the guy realizes that the leopard has disappeared. However, turning around, he noticed that he was surrounded by several identical leopards. Zhu tells Zio that the leopard has used the demonic moon shadow, and the beast intends to fight to the last drop of blood. The girl offers Zio help in the form of her strength, but the young man refuses the offer, mentioning that the girl herself said that the guy needs training. The beasts from all sides attack Zio in a jump, but the guy creates a blue vortex of energy that repels the animals. Suddenly there are more leopards and Zio realizes that he cannot cope with them alone, so he allows Zhu to merge and take control of his body. A powerful stream of Zhu energy crashed into Zio's body and forced him into the air. A huge vortex formed around Jenya and immediately descended. Zio's body changed its appearance again. Half of Zio was covered with a black shell. His eyes shone blue again and a horn was on his head. By the look of the young man, it became clear that Zhu had seized control of the body. Noticing this and feeling the powerful energy coming from the guy, the leopards got scared and started running away. However, before they knew it, the Zhu in Zio's body grabbed the real leopard by the throat and his other shadows disappeared. At that moment, his beast core flew out of the animal. Zhu, being in Sayo's body, grabbed a clot of energy, which is an orange glowing ball and swallowed it. Energy began to fill Zio's body and he noticed that this time the sensations of absorbing the power of the demonic beast were different from the last time. To this, Zhu replied to the guy that each animal's strength is different as well as cultivators. At this moment, very conveniently, an inarticulate mumbling was heard from the side of the pink-haired beauty lying on the ground. Before the girl finally came to her senses and realized that she was alive, Zio attacked her with questions. He began to ask the girl about who she was and what she was doing in this place. The girl was frightened by such assertiveness on the part of the guy and jumped back. To clarify what was happening, Zio reminded the girl that she was being chased by a demonic beast from which Jen, who happened to be nearby, saved her. The girl awkwardly got up from the ground, apologized and introduced herself as Kinla. Kin said that she was a follower of the sect of flowers and asked Jenya about which sect he was from. The young man told the girl his name and said that he did not belong to any of the sects. Hearing the name of the guy, the girl, not believing her ears, repeated it out loud and looked at Zio in shock. Sitting in the cave near the fire, Kin looked at Zio through the flames and speculated about whether Zio Ren was really in front of her. It was already dark outside at that moment and it was pouring rain. The girl couldn't believe that Zio was a traitor to the beast sect, because he didn't look like a villain. Zhu, who was hovering invisibly next to Zio, noted that her master was holding up well, given the fact that the girl was looking at him quite closely. Zio, on the other hand, was busy with completely different thoughts at this moment. Jen realized that Zhu was right and without her strength he would have lost the fight to the leopard. Based on Kinla's awareness of who Zio was, the guy concluded that Yin Wangting had already announced to everyone that the young man had betrayed the sect and now, after learning that Zio was alive, every person in Zion Meng would hunt for Jen. This fact made Zio so angry and upset that he clenched his fist with more force than he broke the branch. From surprise, Le shuddered, shouted and recoiled from the fire. Zio, in turn, quickly got up and announced that he would return soon, left the cave. Kin watched Zio from afar and caught herself thinking that although the guy did not look like a villain, his appearance was ferocious. From cold and hunger, the girl missed her sect, because there, at home, she was waiting for warmth, comfort and a soft bed. With these thoughts, the girl unexpectedly fell into a dream for herself. Kin woke up from the smell. Opening her eyes, she found that Zio was frying two pieces of meat on the fire for himself and her. Seeing Le's surprised face, Jen said that the second piece of meat was already ready, and the girl could start eating it. Kin took the meat on the stick in her hands and smelled a wonderful smell. 
The girl took a bite of the meat and was surprised at how delicious it turned out to be. After that, it was even harder for the girl to believe that Sayo was a bad person. Lu was surprised to notice that the valley they were in was a very dangerous place, but despite this, Zayo felt at home here. The guy was able to easily find dry brushwood and get such delicious meat. The guy replied that he had been living in this valley alone for several months and was used to this place. Hearing this, the girl choked with surprise. She couldn't believe that someone could live for months in such a dangerous place. Jen shared that he himself did not believe that he could survive in this valley and he was literally on his last legs when he found himself in this place. After finishing the delicious meat, the girl remembered that her teacher believes that only a person with a pure and kind heart can cook delicious food. After thinking about this, the girl was surprised to ask Zio about why he decided to betray the sect of the beast and suggested that perhaps there was some misunderstanding or disagreement between Zio and Leader Yin. Wa urged Jenya to share the story with her so that she could pass the information to her teacher so that he, in turn, would help them reconcile. Ju, watching all this, noted what a nice girl Lei is. However, Zio did not share her delight because he was alerted by the fact that Kin called wanting the leader. La told Jen that a meeting of sect masters had recently taken place, at which they chose the one who would stand at the head of San Men. As a result, since the sect of the beast is the strongest, the choice fell on her and thus Yin Wanting ceased to be the master of the sect of the beast and became the leader of Zion Men. The girl also shared that it was rumored that this happened because Yin was able to comprehend the ancient method of creating beast cores and was able to create a heavenly beast core, which brought his cultivation to the level of divine transformation. Suddenly, the flames of the fire broke out, from which the girl was frightened and recoiled back. This happened because Zio was so angry at what he heard that he couldn't control his energy. Jen was shocked and furious. He admitted that Yin's plan was ambitious, because the heavenly core of the beast that Zio made helped wanting capture Zion men. Hearing these words, Lu was surprised and asked Jen if he really called the core his own. Then Jen decided to tell the girl about how it really was. The unsuspecting Zio did not know that at that time, in the new temple of the Nangong Beast Sect, Kyu Shui was reporting to his master Yin wanting that he had met Zio Zhen and he was still alive. In a spacious hall with black walls and low lighting, in the middle of which there was a chair, there were Yin wanting, Kyu Shui and his brother. The new leader of Sanmen sat majestically on a modest wooden throne against the far wall, while the brothers stood at the door. After hearing that Zio Zhen was alive and Nangong had met him, the second brother became enraged and grabbed Kyu Shui by the collar. The guy with red hair began shaking his brother and shouting at him, as he wondered why Nangong did not finish Zio on the spot. Kyu Shui replied that it was not necessary, since they had no reason to be afraid of Zhenya. In addition, at the time of their fight, the guy was called by the teacher and he decided that it was more important to come to his call than to continue fighting. But the brother did not believe the guy and began to accuse him that he was lying and in fact just chickened out and ran away. Yin Wanting, who was watching this exchange, loudly ordered the young men to be silent and stop swearing. The teacher asked Kyu Shuya if he was sure that he had met Zio Zhen and not someone else. In response to the master's question, the green-haired guy bowed and assured the teacher that it was absolutely Zio. After hearing this, the master began to think about what kind of miracle could happen in the Wan Shu Valley with Zhen, because Yin not only deprived him of the core of the beast, but also destroyed his cultivation and Zio was still able to recover and continued to spoil the life of wanting. Nangong's brother told the teacher that he was ready with a great desire to get rid of Zio Zhen so that he would no longer cause problems to the sect. But the master replied that he wanted to catch Zio Zhen alive, but if he resisted strongly, he could be killed. Yin also added that at the moment he needs to focus on the Immortal Alliance, that is, on connecting all the sects of Zion Meng, because he just became the leader and he needs to show his best side. Both brothers promised to carry out Yin Wanting's order. The teacher stood up and asked if Zio Ren had been able to injure Nangong. He advised the young man not to blame himself for what had happened, because the master had called him on an important errand. In response to this, Kyu Shui said that he would obey and obey the teacher. However, Wanting ordered the guys to rest and they obediently left the room. The leader was left alone with his thoughts and thought that Zio Zhen could become an excellent student like Kyu Shui or Lai Jian. But unfortunately the guy is too talented and the teacher had to sacrifice him to make the sect stronger. Yin Wanning decided that if Zio Ren decided to lay low, he would be spared. But if Ren tried to harm the beast sect, there would be no mercy for him. The next morning, Zhu and Zio had already woken up in Wan Shui Valley. The girl noted how pleasant the weather is outside after the rain and how bright the sun is shining. 
At this time, La ran out of the cave in tears. She started crying about how sorry she was for Genya for all that he had to go through and she didn't even realize what a terrible person Yin really was. In response, Zio asked Kin if she was afraid that the guy was cheating on her. But the girl did not even doubt that Zio was right. She decided that there was no need for him to deceive her and she did not believe that such a good person as Zio could do that. After hearing all this, Ju asked Zio about how he thinks, is Le kind or just stupid? But Jen did not answer her, so as not to betray the presence of Zhu. Zio only told Kin that the Wanshu Valley they were currently in was a dangerous place and she had better return to her sect. But the girl objected and said that she had a very important mission and she came to the valley to catch a beast for her master. The fact is that her teacher's birthday is coming soon and she would like to give her something special. Zio asked the girl what kind of animal she would like to catch so that he could help her. La said she wanted to catch a golden-voiced jade vibrating bird. Both Zhu and Zhen shouted in surprise, what? The carefree Kin replied that if it was hard for Zio Zhen to do such a thing, she could catch the bird herself. The girl assured the guy that he could not worry about her getting lost, because Le even specially bought a map of the Wan Shu Valley for this mission. Looking at the map, Zio asked how much Le had paid for such a valuable thing, to which Kin replied that the ancestor of the owner of the map risked his life drawing it, so he asked for 5,000 immortal stones. Shocked, Zio asked the girl if she really paid 5,000 for it, to which Le reassured him that she was able to bargain up to three. After that, La, Jen and Invisible to Kinju went after the bird, following the map. The girl was walking in front, and the guy was walking a little behind her. Zhu told Zio that La had something besides the map and he should deal with it, to which Jen mumbled that he understood her. La heard this and asked Zio why he was sighing and who he was talking to. The girl shared that she sometimes feels like there is someone else besides the two of them. Jen awkwardly laughing assured the girl that it just seemed to her and her imagination was running wild, or else some insects were just flying around her. The girl didn't quite believe Zio's words when she suddenly shouted, Look! Pointing to the right, according to the map, the golden-eyed jade bird should be right in front of the travelers. Zhu thought that ghost birds should gather in this place, and Jen was surprised that Le even understands something about this map. After walking a little forward, the travelers found themselves in front of a beautiful waterfall, in front of which golden hieroglyphs flaunted in the air. Le said that these are golden letters and their appearance means that the bird will appear soon. Jen said that he did not trust the card, but Zhu assured him that he should get it, as it would help him with cultivation. Suddenly Le abruptly jerked somewhere to the side and Zio ran after her. Stopping, they found themselves near the other side of the waterfall and finally saw the bird. It was a large, indescribably beautiful green bird with golden feathers in its tail, and golden letters hovered in the sky around it. Kin noticed out loud that the bird was really very beautiful. Hearing this, the bird transmitted the vibration energy towards the people to knock them down. But the stubborn Le did not want to give up. She called the bird's attack an ordinary breeze and assured that he would not stop it. Jen asked the girl not to hurry, but it was too late. She took out a pouch and shouted that her fire would use the bird the same way she uses the wind. Fire beads flew out of the pouch towards the beast. However, the bird was so strong that it was able to blow them back towards the girl with its strength, extinguishing the beads. But Le did not stop and ordered the fire to return. After her words, several more fire beads flew out of the pouch. Watching all this, Zio asked Ju if she thought Kin could handle it. Ju only smiled at this and replied to Zio that he obviously didn't know anything about this bird. According to legend, the first golden-voiced jade vibrating bird appeared after a sermon by a priest. The beast is a rare spiritual being and is able to turn the words of saints into weapons, thereby striking the soul. The golden-voiced bird can preach sermons. She is a monster of the middle or late Jingdan period. La, in turn, used the Five Elements spell, which was an early base of Jindan cultivation. After learning all this, Zio decided that he should help Kin. But Zhu stopped him, saying that the golden, voiced vibrating bird is a monster with little spiritual wisdom, so she is unlikely to withstand another blow from La. If Zhu and Zhen interfere, the bird will lose its energy and become useless. While Zhu and Zio talk about the situation, Le tries to lure the bird into his trap by saying that if she obediently follows her, nothing will happen to the animal. But the bird does not agree to this condition and responds to Kin with another wind energetic wave. Le swore at the bird and decided that if the animal does not want to do good, it means it is in a bad way. The girl took out a second bag, apparently responsible for the element of water. Combining fire and water in yin yang and using the power of their harmony, the girl attacks the bird with a water dragon. The bird responds to this attack with a sermon in golden hieroglyphs dissect the dragon. Kin is surprised to realize that even the combination of water and fire is powerless against this animal. 
the golden-voiced jade bird begins to read a new sermon and its hieroglyphs penetrate directly into the mind of Lakin. The girl's head begins to split from the sounds and she falls to her knees with a scream and crying, holding her head. Pleased with himself, the bird looks towards the girl, when suddenly, from behind, during the interval between two sermons, the beast is attacked by Zio. However, the bird quickly caught the guy's presence and managed to repel his attack. Jen was surprised by such a quick reaction of the bird, but he did not miss either. Zio started running around the bird, thereby distracting its attention. At the time when the bird began to take off to hide from Zhenya, the guy managed to touch the bird and injure its belly. Zio regretted that he did not get to the right place, but noted that with such an injury, the animal would not fly far. At that moment, Lo woke up and began to look around. The girl quickly realized that the bird was injured and wanted to escape. Zio also realized this and decided to use the lunar leopard technique, namely the shadow of the moon demon. A lot of his copies appeared around Zhenya and they all moved towards the bird. Watching this, Kin realized that Zio was masquerading as a monster, unlike the Imperial Beast sect, who used the Imperial Envoy as a weapon. From all sides, Zio's clones attack the bird, but she decides to create an ultimatum sermon and a huge golden hieroglyph appears above the bird. The beast directs it directly at Zio's forehead, but it turns out that it is his clone. Jen didn't know if the injuries of the clones were reflected on the body of the person himself and, frightened, quickly dispersed them. Zio realizes that he has not studied this technique enough yet, while Zhu tells the CMU that the golden-voiced bird's strength is already running out. The bird takes off and tries to escape towards the waterfall, but Kin attacks the bird with the element of water with lightning speed. Jen notes to himself that the beast did not even try to dodge the attack and it looks like the trick with shadows touched not only Zio, but also the bird itself. The beast is trying to regain strength, but it is getting worse by the second. Zio calls Lady Kin to him and says that they still have time for the final attack. Zio uses the fatal blow of the fallow deer, and the blue vortex of energy finally finishes off the bird, leaving a deep trace in the ground. Surprised, Le wonders to herself what kind of power this is and where Zio got it from. The lady is surprised at how strong Zhen is, while the guy runs towards the bird. After reaching the beast, La falls to her knees and says with relief that they finally managed to catch this naughty bird. The beast at this time lies submissively on the stone, unable to move. Suddenly, two of her little chicks fly up to the bird. La is touched and wants to approach the kids, but the bird looks at the girl with a threat. Jen warns La that she should not approach the animal's children, because she can destroy her inner core for their salvation. Kin asks Jen about whether he knew about this bird. Jen replied that apparently, after Zio injured her, she realized that she could not cope with them and wanted to fly away, but she could not. The bird tried to distract people from their children, but Le and Jen knocked it down and the animal had to fight to the death. Jen also noted that if Kin provokes the bird, it can destroy everyone. At that moment, Zhu told Zio that the golden-eyed jade bird was very smart and would never abandon her children, so it was impossible to catch her. Realizing her mistake, Le decided that she would not try to catch the bird and cured all its wounds. Kin also said that she no longer needed the map of Wan Shu Valley and gave it to Zhen. Zio noted that Le was very generous and awkwardly thanked her for the gift, to which Kin replied that her teacher had taught her to thank people. Le began to approach the bird, assuring her that she would not take her to the flower sect, and the animal had no reason to be afraid of her. Zhu told Zio that she thought Jen and La had a lot in common, but privately noted that one day naivety and kindness could become their weaknesses. At this time, La had already managed to do something and, shouting that she would not tear the bird's feathers, began to run away from her, surrounded by chicks. Jen asked Zhu why they needed the map given to them by Kin, because it was written in demonic characters that he did not understand. The girl replied that this was a ban that was imposed on the card and in order to remove it and read the card, you need to use a special technique. With the help of the energy of her power, Zhu created a kind of glasses with which Zio was able to read the map and understand what was written on it. Suddenly Zhu saw something on the map and shouted. Jen asked what the girl had noticed, to which she replied that she would take Zio to the treasure. La said goodbye to Zio and promised that she would tell her teacher about the unfair treatment to him. After a while, Jen and Zhu found themselves in the cave of 10,000 beasts. Moving deeper into the cave with a torch in his hand, Zio noted that this place has a difficult terrain. Zhu shared with Zio that she and other people from the legend once lived in this place, to which Jen asked in surprise why then she was able to find this place only with the help of a map. 
The girl replied that there had been huge changes during the time she was in the valley and everything had changed in the cave itself, too. Zhu reminded Zio that Lin no longer has a card and asked Jenya if he was worried about her. Zio replied that he was actually a little worried about Kin, to which Zhu replied, then why did he go to the cave with her and not stay with Kin? Jenya was uncomfortable discussing this and he asked the girl to stop her questions. Suddenly, a drop fell on the map from the ceiling of the cave and a drawing appeared on it. It showed Zhu with some man. Zio was surprised and asked Zhu about why this happened. The surprised girl looked at the map and told that a few hundred years ago she met a man in a cave. He was attacked by evil spirits, but the master, seeing the evil egg in the hands of that person, became very angry and hated the cultivator who stole it with all his heart. Later it turned out that the man was not a cultivator, but an ordinary person and stole an egg for his dying wife. In the end, the master gave the man medicine for his wife, and he, in turn, drew a portrait of Zhu with her teacher. Zhu did not even think that she would be able to see this picture after several hundred years. At this time, Zio reached a large stone door in the cave wall, and asked Zhu if they had come there. Zhu walked up to the tall stone doors and confirmed that this was the place she had mentioned earlier. Zhu touched the door with the words Master, Zhu is back. The girl began to recite a spell and blue hieroglyphs began to appear on the doors. The doors opened and Sayo saw a large stone room. Sayo privately assumed that this was the residence of the previous owner of Zhu. The room was very primitive. It contained one stone bed and one stone table. Zhu told Zayo that once the master loved people, but also because of the so-called true path he knew betrayal. In the end, the master could only live with Zhu in this small stone cave. Zhu shared with Jen that she chose him not only because he was able to create the heavenly core of the beast, but also because he and her master have the same fate, and therefore this time the girl will not make the same mistakes. Zhu spoke about it with sadness on her face and bitterness in her voice. After she finished speaking, the girl went to the entrance of the other room and called Zio to follow her. Going inside, Jen was very surprised and froze from what he saw. He couldn't believe that there was a demonic beast's coffin in front of him. With one movement of her hand, Zhu touched the stone slab and blue signs appeared on it, after which the slab moved away. Jen was very scared and screamed that the coffin had opened. The surprised girl turned to Zio with a bundle in her hands and asked him why he was shouting. Jen awkwardly scratched his head and said that he thought there was something else in the coffin. Jen noticed the bundle in Zhu's hand and asked her what it was. The girl replied that she was holding a jade letter that the master had left her when he left her, saying that it contained a legacy. Jen asked Zhu again about what left means. The girl said that where they are standing, there is his grave. In the last battle, the master chose to fight alone. Before he went into battle, he ordered her to keep his legacy and wait for the next person destined for her by fate. In the end, the master did not return and Zhu had to terminate the contract with him, which led to a significant decline in her strength. Thus, the girl was left alone in the Wanshu Valley for several years, until she finally met Zio. Summing up all the above, the girl handed the jade letter to Zhenya. Taking the bundle in his hands, the thread opened and pieces of jade writing floated in the air around Zio along with the hieroglyphs written on them. Suddenly Zhen found himself in a clearing, and a man was sitting on the grass in front of him. Zio guessed that it was the master of the demonic beast Zhu. When the gentleman saw Zhenya, he asked him if he could drink. Zio did not understand the question, when suddenly some unknown clot of energy began to appear in front of him. Zhen tried to hold him, but I can't figure out what kind of power it is. A bowl of water appeared in Zio's hands, which he emptied, after which he looked questioningly at the master. The master replied that Zio drinks badly, but his strength satisfies him. However, the master was concerned about the question of why the core of Zhu is in Zhenya's body. The master came close to Zio and Zhen was scared, but he didn't show it. Zhen replied that he was suddenly betrayed and the golden core was destroyed, and Zhu saved him. At the moment, Zio and Zhu have a common core and they exist together. Hearing such an answer, the master was surprised and did not believe that Zio was not lying. At that moment, Zio's body was still in the stone room, and Zhu, who was watching him, noticed that the young man's breathing had quickened. The girl began to worry about what was going on. The master created an aura of purple-colored energy around Zio and began to put pressure on the young man, asking about who he was. Zhen began to answer the master that there was no need for him to check on him and he would adequately take care of Zhu, because the girl saved him when he was near death, and if she had problems, he would help her at the cost of his life. The master replied only that in his opinion Jen is smart enough and the teacher hopes that Zio will remember this meeting. Suddenly hieroglyphs appeared in the air, and the master urged Jenya to remember them, because they were the secrets of controlling the beasts, and could be very useful. 
The master also asks Zio to take care of Zhu. In fact, the fact that Zhu gave him the jade letter indicates that she recognized the young man. But the master still doubted the choice of the girl. The master told Zio that the true way to control the beast is to become a friend for him. We need to treat each other as equals and unite two souls. If Zio does this, then he and Zhu will be able to achieve an inseparable bond and their power will generate unlimited possibilities, and all beings will worship them. The master gave Zio his last strength, in the hope that they would help the young man and Zhu. He urged Zio and Zhu to trust each other. The master said that he would look forward to when they would stand at the head of the beast sect and sow turmoil in this world. The spirit of the master in the form of a letter did not have to exist for long, and he again called on Zio to remember everything he said and showed him. After that, the master, like a piece of paper, split into several small pieces and scattered in the air. Zhu was sitting at the high stone doors outside the room and playing with a ball created from energy. Apparently, she had been waiting for Zio for quite a long time. Suddenly the doors opened and the guy went out into the cave. Zhu eagerly approached him and began to ask about what was in the jade letter. Jen replied to her that he had met with a master of demonic beasts. They placed the jade letter on the stone table and left the cave. Standing at the entrance to the cave, Zio asked Zhu if she was sure what she was going to do. The girl replied that her master loved this place during his lifetime and it was his method to stay in harmony with nature. Zio lent Zhu his body, letting her in. The girl created a lot of balls of blue energy around herself and then directed them towards the cave at once. Because of this, a rockfall occurred and the entrance to the cave was blocked. Now no one could enter there anymore. Zio Ren bowed and announced that he was saying goodbye to the respected demon beast master. At this time, in the beast sect, Yin Wanting was fighting with two animals in order to get their cores. First, he defeated a huge gray wolf by binding it with threads from a clot of his green energy. Then a huge purple water dragon jumped out of the water. He tried to attack the master, but he reacted first and pierced the beast with sharp needles of his energy. The animal fell into the water, and Wanting will be able to get two dark green kernels. He admired them and thought about how much use they could bring him. Yin realized that heavenly cores not only help to increase cultivation at times, but can also improve various beasts. At that moment, Qiu Shui and his brother Lai Jian arrived at the temple. They reported to the master that the beast sect is the highest sect of the Immortal Alliance and therefore all the major sects of the Immortal Alliance responded to the meeting. However, from the looks of it, the other three big clans out of the four big clans and Zion men didn't like it. To this, Yin replied that the Immortal Alliance is dominated by the beast sect, so there is no need for four great clans. The leader gave the brothers black cores and ordered them to kill everyone who stood in their way. At this time, Zio was sitting in the forest by the fire in his usual lotus position. Zhen concentrated on the energy in him and his aura burned yellow. The guy was thinking that in the sect of the beast he had been taught a method of management, which consisted in the fact that a person should control a beast, a man is a master, and a beast is a slave. Given Zhenya's current strength, he could not fully understand the legacy of the demon beast master, but the spiritual power he had bestowed on him would still be fully useful to the young man. In the temple of the beast sect, the brothers Qiu Shui and Lai Jian were floating in the air in the lotus position, concentrating on their energy. The green and purple aura hovered around them. At some point, the leader directed the threads of his green energy towards the guys to attack them. Above the brothers, their beasts immediately appeared. Above Qiu Shui, a large green snake called the Devil Snake, and above Lai Jiang, a purple bird called the Fire Hawk. Both animals repelled Yin Wanting's attack. The brothers enjoyed the strength given to them by the leader and thanked him for the cores. The teacher helped them to gather together the soul of the beast and strengthen it. Thereby the brothers broke through to the boundaries of the original yin level. However, young men should practice controlling such a strong beast themselves. The man sent the guys and ordered them to show everyone how solid the place of the beast sect in the immortal alliances. After leaving the temple, Lai Jian asked his brother if he was excited. The youth replied that he was looking forward to the completion of the beast's sacrifice tower, and when the entire immortal alliance would submit to their beast sect. At this time, Jen, dressed in a hooded robe, milking the disguise and, as always, invisible to others, Zhu was watching the tower. The girl noted that the structure looks quite majestic and teacher Zio has a good taste in architecture. Jen objected, saying that Yin Wanting is not his teacher and everything that this man does is dirty and vile. Zhu noted to herself that her master had become much calmer. Two guys not far from Zio exchanged their thoughts about the fact that this time the sect of the beast is holding a ceremony of sacrifice to the beast. Genya was interested in this conversation and he decided to eavesdrop a little. One of the men said that last month, the sect outshone everyone at the Immortal Alliance meeting and it showed that it was the number one sect. 
so it is quite obvious that they decided to hold a ceremony of sacrifice to the beast. The second man agreed with the first, because even the other four strongest sects of Beihua, Mai Yao, and Tian Ling Eleven did not say anything. What can we say about the opinion of ordinary people? The second guy in response shared rumors that even before the meeting of the Immortal Alliance, a traitor appeared in the sect of the beast, whom they still have not caught. After that, Zio abruptly rushed towards the temple and called Zhu to follow him. They decided to check out the situation near the tower and understand what was going on there. Zhu shared with Zio that in one prophecy it was said that the beast sect would hold a sacrifice ceremony for the beast in the Hall of the Immortal Alliance on the 15th day of the 5th month. So the head of the sect, using the heavenly core of the beast, would be able to subdue the most ancient evil spirits. It seems that Teacher Zio will use the ceremony of sacrificing to the beast to assert his authority. A lot of cultivators will come to the ceremony, so Zhu asked Zio if they would go there. Jen replied that they would go, as it was a rare opportunity to see such a thing. The girl said that in this case, as long as they are not being chased to kill, they should have fun in this world again. Zio remembered the master's words that he should protect Zhu. The guy decided that it was better to first think about how they would get into the ceremony, because it was too risky to just invade the Hall of the Immortal Alliance. Suddenly, two men flew right in front of Zio. A certain Chu Yan, a disciple of the Scarlet Fury sect, hit them hard and was outraged that they dared to challenge the decisions of the Beast sect. The guys replied that Chu Yan is a disciple of the Scarlet Fury sect and there is no need for him to get involved in a conversation between two men about the Beast sect. Besides, the Immortal Alliance is not subordinate to the Beast sect. Chu Yan was amazed by what he heard and said that for his sect, the Beast sect is the head of the Immortal Alliance and these men dared to talk about it so arrogantly. According to the guy, they deserved a good beating for this. Chu Yan kicked the table in front of him hard, so that it flew into one of the men and knocked him to the ground. The student stepped on the man from above and called him garbage. The man replied that the Scarlet Fury sect does nothing but beat people and asked why, when at the very beginning the Beast sect did not have such a high status, the disciples of the Scarlet Fury sect were not so audacious. Chu Yan was very angry with this statement and he directed the Palm of Heavenly Fire attack directly at the man. He was about to burn the man, but he was stopped by a voice shouting that the members of the Beast sect were also too arrogant. After looking at the one who was hiding, Chu Yan demanded that he take off his mask and reveal his identity. A disciple of the Scarlet Fury sect concluded that the guy standing in front of him at least owns a golden core, because he was able to stop the palm of heavenly fire. Zio introduced himself by a fake name, Shuang Yu. Zhu laughed at him, because this name was similar to another one, Mozi, which translated meant posthumous manuscript. Chu Yan realized that the name he heard meant nothing to him and assumed that the guy was a disciple of some secret sect. Chu Yan said that now the beast sect is the leader in the Immortal Alliance, and some unknown person insulted her with obscene words. Therefore, the man succumbed to emotions and put them in their place. Suddenly, Chu Yan was enraged again that one of the men bowed to Zio in gratitude. He decided to finish Yen off and attacked him with two palms of fire. But Jen turned out to be stronger, so a few minutes later Chu Yan was already standing in the temple of his sect and reporting to the teacher. The guy's face was swollen and swollen from beatings. In this form, he reported to his master that the guy who beat him had taken the invitation to the ceremony from one of the students. Lai Jian asked the head of the Fury sect, Gong Sun Feng, to give this information to Lai Jian. The master was angry that some Shuang Yu dared to humiliate a disciple of his sect in public and vowed to turn him into ashes. 